Okay, y'all, let's talk about Kim Porter's book. So before I hop in, I want to take the time to shout out and thank Milagro Grams from my radio for taking the time to buy this book and read this book from start to finish on her channel. I listened to her read it twice, and I'm here to just give my opinion about the whole thing. A lot of the stuff that was said in this book is entertaining and salacious, but um, I don't know if I believe that it's all straight from Kim Porter's diary. I don't know if she really was writing all of this stuff down. I'm not saying that she couldn't have, but again, I don't know if it's all straight from her diary. I do believe that it is her experience though, 100%. I believe that this is her experience of Hollywood and Diddy. So that's just my opinion on the matter. But, um, you know, as far as the stuff that was being talked about, we hear some absurd things. Um, I knew that Kim Porter was getting, you know, beat on by Ziddy. There's a photo with her of um, a nose bandage on. And I still feel the need to say allegedly because um, none of this stuff has been proven still i mean we can have evidence but until i guess the court really you know tries him for it we can't say that it's fact and plus i was not there but i have seen some photos of kim porter and diddy looking really you know suspicious again i do believe that he was putting his hands on her um we do have diddy you know on camera beating the hell out of cassie so we know that um he has it in him and you know so i i just do believe that he was beating the hell out of cam too I believe every woman that he has been with, including Carisha, again, who's lying for him because he's still funding her lifestyle. I do believe he putting hands on her. He pees on her. I believe he probably roughed up J-Lo when she got out of there before it got too intense. Um, I believe every woman, you know, Daphne Joy, Gina, uh, she's, she's said too that he has like kicked her, beat her, caused her a miscarriage. You know, every woman that has laid down with Diddy, I think that he has put hands on them. That's probably why Lori Harvey hurry up and got away from him, too, probably because he may have tried to put hands on her. That's just a thought. Again, I don't have any proof of what happened between him and Lori. But, um, you know, the book does, again, talk a lot about how Diddy frequently put hands on Kim, threw stuff at her. Um... And again, we have video evidence of him throwing lamps and shit at Cassie. So I believe that. Um, but what was really just like, whoa, was Kim talking about how much she was involved with these Hollywood ex parties. Um, again, it's been talked about and rumored for years that Diddy got down with men. And um, I know how the industry works. So, yes, I definitely believe that clearly with the tapes and the freak offs yes did he was doing this i didn't know he was doing it in the freak off manner i thought he was just being your typical down low guy like one-on-one -on -one stuff but come to find out you know the way hollywood moves he was at parties like just running amok and if y'all don't believe any of this stuff, just go watch the movies Eyes Wide Shut and Rosemary's Baby because on both of those films, they expose how Hollywood gets down. They expose the parties, the rituals, you know, the people standing around in circles chanting Latin, the robes, the blood, the, the, all the demon worship. Like they expose the voodoo, the magic. They expose everything. So, um, you know, again, you don't have to believe it, but Hollywood has produced films, again, exposing them, exposing, yes, exposing themselves to the things that they do. So you can choose to believe what you want to believe. But again, if it was all so fake, then why is there, you know, again, movies, you know, from Hollywood exposing Hollywood? So I'm gonna just leave you with that. Um, so come to find out Diddy, you know, was all in these rituals. Now, when his stuff was exposed with Cassie and Carisha with the freak offs and the pink cocaine and, you know, the sex workers and all of that, I thought to myself, I was like, OK, so Kim Porter had to be in on it, too. Like, you don't get to be with somebody for the vast majority of your adult life. Have 
three biological kids with them and then they adopt um you know a fourth kid that you have which was um Quincy um Kim's first child with I'll be sure y'all don't share four kids together without you being complicit in this bullshit too clearly Diddy doesn't feel like anybody is special so that let me know okay Kim like yeah you were getting your ass whooped in exchange for financial gain and a lifestyle but you were also doing freaky shit too so i'm just saying again the stuff with diddy i'm stuff with cassie and carisha exposed kim porter in my eyes um but then this book takes it another step further and talks about just how many people she was laying down with and just how long this stuff had been going on and to the severity of it i mean we hear about her you know, doing stuff while pregnant, you know, which is just insane. Um, she talks about messing with Kimora. She talks about messing with Tupac. She talks about just a slew of different men. And I do believe it. I do believe it. I do believe, you know, again, Kim Porter was doing whatever Diddy wanted her to do um, because she liked the lifestyle. And the book does talk about that where, you know, Diddy is like, you know, I'm able to provide us a comfy life. And do you want this all to go away? And of course, like at every opportunity, Kim accepts that she wants this lifestyle and she continues to take him back. Um, despite, you know, the beatings and the abuse and just the, manipul the manipulation and the lies and the cheating, she continuously takes him back. And I just want people to understand that, again, with, with Carisha, with Cassie, with Kim, again, Gina, Dana T, the one who got a kid by him, and any other woman that has messed with Diddy for a long time, they wanted something in exchange for what they were going through. Um, the only person who clearly was like really, really wanted love, I think, was J Lo because um, J Lo again had a successful career. Diddy helped her get a successful career, but she left him the moment she was about to like you know go too far down a rabbit hole. She left and never turned back. So she's the only person again that I think really has some level of self-love and self-respect to get the hell up out of there. But when it comes to everybody else, again, these are women who, again, don't have thriving careers. And I know that Diddy was in charge of Cassie's career. Um, but I've been telling you guys, Cassie was turned over to the industry by her parents. She was already turned over before she met Diddy. Like, that's why she was a teenager dating Ryan Leslie, who was a grown man at the time. So Cassie had already, again, been exposed to the industry stuff, you know, before Diddy. And Diddy did help her, you know, I believe, book some modeling gigs and help kept her semi-relevant. But clearly he wanted to control any kind of career that, um, any kind of music career. And has Cassie, you know, pursued music now that she's free from Diddy? No. You know, she released like one album and like one mixtape. Those are like the two full projects that she released under Bad Boy, um, a single here or there. But can y'all really say that Cassie was really trying to do music? Like, no, and she's not about to convince me that she was neither. She was enjoying the Birkins. Cassie had a Birkin well before they were like super popular. She had penthouses, she had cars, she had Birkins. And I do believe that these women did try to get away from Diddy. I know they were afraid for their life. I know that Diddy, you know, hurt people and unalived people around them. But again, I just know that there was some level of um, compliance and agreement in their own abuse. And I, I just can't sit here and deny that. I think if anybody with a brain is going to start to look at Kim Porter different after reading or listening to this book, because, again, people have to take some kind of responsibility and accountability in their own demise. They just do. Um, I just really hate that kids have been affected by this stuff you know Kim Porter and did he have children and um you know if if half that stuff was going on while Kim Porter was uh, with child then oh my gosh you know I just hope that her kids are healthy and okay but again this stuff is sick and 
Um, again, Alistair Crowley is again a, a was a high level occultist who has a book called Sex Magic, where again he talks about sex um, on a spiritual level and how again you can use sex as a spiritual practice to level up in the spiritual realm, which should help you level up in the material realm. So again, you don't have to believe it. It could be too far fetched. I know for some people, they just can't wrap their mind around it, but the facts are in front of you. And, you know, I know some pills are hard to swallow and they may take time to process, but you don't have to want to believe this stuff. Again, the films, the books, they're out there. Um, Aleister Crowley was a real person and he really did influence music and influence people. And there are people like Beyonce and Jay-Z and again, Diddy and many, 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 many more people who follow his teachings. So it's up to you to figure out how you're going to process it and if you want to believe it or not. But the facts are, are there. Um, that's really all I have to say about this. It's just sick. And I, I just hope Kim Porter can rest now. But again, I'm looking at Kimora. I'm looking at just everybody, everybody crazy because I'm like, yuck. And again, there are photos. I have photos in this video of a bunch of people in bed together. And they have Diddy's mama, Janice, you know, on, on in one of those photos. And that goes to show that, again, she may be a high level madam. You know, again, notice how I've always started to notice. Notice how Lil' Kim and Mary J. Blige also were rocking the blonde wigs and Diddy's mom stays in a blonde wig. So clearly she was a part of their spiritual and, and material world um, ascension. You know, it's a lot of people's mothers in this industry, cough, cough, Tina Knowles, cough, cough, Kris Jenner, who allegedly are high level members of the occult who you know, who are helping their children along in the industry and who are helping to recruit other people, you know, and initiate other people along in the industry. So just pay attention to the ones who are the most quiet. But with that, I'm going to just, you know, sign off. Let's talk in the comments, you guys. Let's talk about my commentary. Let's talk about the book. And I'm going to hit y'all in the next one. Bye.